Hello and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Uh, today I will try my hand at the bowling game Kata again. Um, the link to the Kata is in the description as always. Uh, but uh, instead of uh, doing a test driven development, or even worse, the big design up front as I was trying yesterday, I'm going to try um, doing some uh, exploring in the algebra driven design uh, methodology. Uh, you could call it a methodology, I guess. It's uh, I last year I bought a book uh, by Sandy Maguire, and I really it is really interesting to read about how um, uh, designing uh, software and uh, writing uh, good software. Uh, the language is not uh, the preferred language is not code, but uh, the algebra that that is above that. It's uh, an, on a higher abstraction. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well. I'm not going to try to do that in, uh, in a few minutes here. Um, but uh, uh, as we start writing uh, for the software, uh, start writing uh, the software for the bowling game, um, it might be clearer what I mean. I don't even think that the bowling game kata is a, a, a good example for writing uh, in the algebra-driven design style. But uh, I will try and explain as I go along. Let's not wait too long for this. Um, as I said, the bowling game kata is on the in the link in the description. Um, and um, with algebra driven design, you start by writing clause. Um, so you you write the interface, you write types and constructors, and some observations, um, and then you write laws to which those uh, types. Uh, should adhere. Um, and for the bowling game kata, the interface is a bit given, but let's write some things down as we go along. Let's see where this goes. Um, we have some types, some constructors and some observations how i like to uh, start my um start my types normally uh we do have a type at least that is the game type because we construct a game object uh, that we can later observe And we um, construct it by feeding it rules of integers. So we have a constructor and we have and that gives us a game or maybe even if we have a game, it extends the game. And uh, we also have an observation score, because if we want to see whether or not two games are the same, we look at the scores. At least that's what the interface uh, gives us at the moment. So score, we give it a game and we get an int. So this is the interface that we are requested uh, to fill in. And now it's time to enter the rules. Laws. Uh, how are we going to do this? Um, we can say a game consists of 10 frames. And in each frame, the player has two rolls to knock down 10 pins. Mm. Um, I already wrote down that we construct a game by already have having a game so we have to have something to construct an empty game but i'm thinking about uh, only allowing a full game to be constructed but that implies that we need to know how many roles the game has so that would probably not be a good decision let's just have something that creates a new game Um, oh, let's export that constructor. 
as well. So we can think up some laws already. Um, let's say that for all games, if we have a game and we add the role of zero, it would not affect the score in any way ever. I'm not sure if this is a really good law to have. I'm not sure if that's a law that holds for all bowling games and that we have the we observe the score that it doesn't change. But let's let's say for example that this works. So uh, we have a game and we add a role to it of zero. It should be equal to the game as it was seen through the score. Um, I don't think the games themselves are equal because if, well, the only thing we are given to observe the game by is this scoring function that gives us the value of the game. And maybe this scoring value should only be valid or should only work if we have a full game played uh, with uh, up until the last roll. And yeah, then the games are probably not distinguishable. Uh, if you have two games that have 10 points and one consisted of the first roll was a strike and the rest was nothing, and the other one had uh, only a strike in the last frame, in the 10th frame, those games are equally good, equally well played, I'm not sure. Are they the same game? Probably. As far as we are concerned, I guess. Can we write a test, test for this? Mm. Yeah. Um. We should be able to generate a game. And if we have that game and we or the zero on that game, it should be equal uh, to the original game, but this is not what we want to do because this is the completely equal game. Observably equal for games. Let's just go with this. Add the for all that we had, uh, define the gen game and gen game of course generates let's add this to the import list uh, generates a game and then we have observable equal observably equal observable equality I'm not sure has two games and then it should return a property hmm does this work no it doesn't this work it does for now and we don't have an instance show for the kata well no problem um yeah i'm not sure if there's something we can do um deriving stock show but it cannot create an instance of show because we do not have yet uh, any constructors so let's just have a parameterless constructor it should work we have an unused import here okay and we get errors which is expect to be expected because we didn't have any implementation at all mm. and the idea is that we don't write any implementation until we have all the laws But then we should be able to think of better laws. Let's just go on. I hope you're enjoying this or thinking with me about what's going on. Um, if we have two games that we want to uh, compare, we will probably compare them by the only thing we have, the observation through score. Come on. want to generate the game well 
we can only use the constructors that we have. Mm. Uh, the idea is, uh, as soon as you start writing implementation, which uh, we will do if you want this test to be get green, um, you are going to hold on to that implementation even before you have thought out the complete algebra that your uh, type could have or the complete algebra that your program could or should have. So that's why I'm still hesitant uh, to write some implementation. We don't even know all the constructors. We have two constructors, the new game and the role. Let's say that if we have a game, the rule of no score. Say that we have the uh, a game. Where was I going with this? A game that mm, Uh, any role should be at most 10. So say if we have an empty game, any role that we add for, to an empty game should add a maximum of 10 to the score for that game. Is that a law? Probably. Let's just go there. If we have an empty game, so we are now going to have a role. If we have a new game, uh, we really need to compare scores now only. Uh, if we roll anything for that game, and we compare scores, The new game the score of that new game cannot be more than 10 it can also not be smaller than the original so this new score is higher than or equal to the score of the empty game because the score is here okay, let's let's do this differently if we are going to compare through score if we add a role then um, we can use quality by clamping this role between 0 and 10 so it's at the any role that we add will never roll more than 10 if we have a, uh, if we give it an integer of higher than ten or less than zero, it will be clamped and will be, be at most ten or at least zero. Is that usual? Uh, is that usable? It sounds like uh, so. This doesn't even work for any for new games. It works for any game. So let's add a game here. Lamb of R between zero and ten. And we have to define clamp. So we have a value and we have a least and most.
then I always return a value between inclusive these rings. We define the gen int as well. And this is just the original gen int with a linear bounded range. And I could do this every time. So we have two laws and 10 minutes left. Let's see, wait no 50 minutes. If we go and add a law. And we add a law that says, if we add a little role already. Hmm. We can start from an empty game and we can say if we have a role of 10 then this and the role of something else then the score will be we have a, if we add a role of 10 and two other roles then the score will be 10 plus those two other roles so this is a Problem is, I want to add a, a rule or a law that says we can any pin that you roll, you get that added to the score at least. Because it's not true. Because if you roll after the tenth frame, if there are no more frames, but we have no way of seeing. If, if we uh, stick to the interface that is given in this kata, say, roll the empty constructor and the observation, there, uh, the, there is no way of telling whether there are still rolls left in the game. So you cannot, can't say, oh, wait, I have a generic game here. I'm rolling and I'm rolling 10 pins. You cannot even say if you can roll 10 pins because what if you are uh, at the second roll in the frame and some you rolled nine pins before? That is impossible to tell by this interface. So I think I will come back to this uh, in the next video. Um, not, not finished in this one yet. And add more to the interface so that we can have better rules, better laws, because we cannot catch the, or uh, we cannot describe the laws using only what we have. We do have the law of max roll and we should have the law of um, we can write laws if we have just started the game. So uh, law of first roll score that we have because if we have a new game then it's certain that anything you roll and you get the score from that. Uh, yeah. You have the same value. Well, the clamp value of that R for score. So we, you cannot have anything else. Should I refactor this? I'm not sure. Yes. But this only works for the new game. And we need to have uh, the score because we cannot have an equals from Are these integers? Um, we could say still. Oh, we have five minutes. No, ten minutes left. I will try and do this in the last five minutes. Fill in the details. 
but maybe not at all during this um, stream uh, law of strike so if we have a strike first so if we roll a 10 then we have to order rolls roll zero roll one if we have a strike first then roll r zero and roll r one then the score should be 10 plus the clamped score of r zero and the clamped score of r one this is a mouthful But this always holds if you start from a zero game. Well, that's, this doesn't say anything about games in, in progress because we don't know if this 10 is a valid strike or will complete, will be clamped and complete a uh, spare. Let's go from here. If uh, we have an R0 and R1. So if we score from a new game, wait, we score R0 and we score R1, then at least we have the score of, well, I can just copy this. Okay, let's let's do some uh, implementation. So, if we want to generate a random game, and there's only one place where we use this, uh, no, two games, uh, zero wouldn't matter. I think these are more useful laws than the other ones. Zeros don't matter, and um, rolls are always clamped to between zero and 10. How do we generate a game? Um, well, we choose either we go, <laughs> I should have looked up. Um, there is a choice, I believe, no, awaited. No, I didn't. We could can, of course, return uh, new game. This should do something, but this is not all the games that we have. Um, I'll quickly. Can I find? the place where we have frequency that is well what we can do it's, it's better um we start out with a new game but we also have a list of roles in the range between zero and, and let's say 20. The worst game you can play is writing, uh, throwing all spares. So you have um, all zeros, of course, but if you have all spares, then the maximum roles you have is uh, 10 times 2 is 20, 21. And then we generate ints. Uh, and we use valid ints here. 
Oh, no, let's just choose something end. And then we hold and use roll for each of those. On that game. And I think it is a flipped version. And I think we have to return this purely. Okay. So this generates games now. And we have some errors, and one of the errors is score is undefined. Yeah, of course. We have no idea how to generate a score. We have no idea how to return a game. Let's just return the game constructor. That would help. Um, um, rolling a game. What if we just uh, add it to the list? If we make this a game of integers, so we have the pins here, and we have a game of uh, rolls. Then we append it, and we prepend it. And if we want to have the score of this game. For now, we can do a sum, and then we can see that we have some errors here because, of course, this doesn't work. Three failures in four tests. I'm not sure if this goes. This is going to work. The first law holds. If we add zero, it doesn't uh, do anything. This doesn't work. Yeah, of course. If we don't clamp the pins. It will never uh, clamp. So what if we clamp this? Clamp pins between 0 and 10. And we define it here as well. So we can fix uh, this code. Yes, we are now defining, uh, having it written a test with the same implementation against that implementation. Uh, and for now it works. Because of course it does. Because we only tested new games. Uh, and, and a new game with... The, the, the law that we described isn't even correct. I am so sorry. But still we are making progress and Maybe this gives an idea of how uh, how you would design an algebra. I don't think it does. These laws, they don't feel uh, really that nice. I will try this again in the next uh, video and show more of, about uh, how this works. Um, I'm tempted to try and correct it law, this law, but uh, hey, we have two minutes left. Uh, so I will end this video here, so you have something to watch today. Mm. Tomorrow, <clears throat> when doing the bowling game kata, uh, I will do uh, algebra driven design again, and then I will add something to the interface, I think, uh, that makes it easier to see uh, whether something is uh, a valid role or not, and then we can make the loss even a bit more clear. Um, but well, for now, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope your uh, interest is piqued in uh, algebra driven design because uh, it's a really interesting, uh, a really interesting book to read and an interesting uh, method to write a software and make sure it's more correct. Um, I will put a link to the book in the description as well, as far as, far as I can find it. Uh, well, again, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope to see you again tomorrow.